Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and today I wanted to give you a quick update on whether or not using a heating pad allowed me to get my soldier fly larva through the winter. Stay tuned. Welcome back subscribers. If you haven't joined us yet, you can do so by clicking on the Green Shorts icon that's going to appear in the bottom right hand corner of the screen throughout the video. The short of it is, it worked and it didn't. Basically, the heat allowed the existing soldier fry larva to pupate. That allowed them to crawl out into the capture basins where they then promptly froze and died. And even if they had hatched into adults, the outside temperatures were cold enough that it didn't allow the adults to mate and then lay eggs. So the cycle was stopped even though the heat allowed me to continue to operate the composting portion of their life cycle, it stopped after that. So what I need to do today is remove a lot of the biomass that's still in my composter from last season. I wanna make room for more, and I'm gonna move that into my garden bed, which I've got in cover crop right now, but I'm gonna actually cover that cover crop with compost, let it become compost and then begin planting for the spring. I'm gonna leave a little bit of the biomass behind, especially where I find housefly larvae. Housefly larvae are a precursor to the soldier fly larvae. They're coming first, and then the soldier fly larvae are gonna come in. And in fact, what they do, once they establish themselves, they're gonna move the housefly larvae out. While it's nice and light, I'm gonna move it to the back of the backyard for its summer location. got some spent brewer's grain here from a friend of mine who brews beer and I'm going to add that in. It's starting to decompose nicely. That's going to help create the smells that are going to bring the house fly larva in and ultimately the soldier fly larva. One thing to note is that the house flies are going to lay their eggs right on the compostable material whereas the soldier fly want to lay their eggs beside it so near it the flies have already found it. So the last thing I'm going to add to this bin is my packets of corrugated cardboard. They've got perfect cavities for the soldier fry larvae to lay their eggs in. And then I can actually move those pieces of cardboard down into the compost once the eggs have been laid. So instead of putting them in the back like I would normally do, I'm going to put it out toward the edge to give them the easiest access to the egg laying area. I've got two full chafing dishes here which I will transport to the garden. All right, so my soldier fly larva composter is set up for the spring. We'll start to see house fly larva first, and then these soldier flies will come. I started to see a few adults emerging uh, from my worm composting bin, a few of them that stayed in there during the winter. It's been in the garage, so they, they have uh, come out earlier than the ones would be outside. And of course you can see the house flies have already found this bin in its new location. Now let me just say, I know this composter was one of my more complicated builds. It actually took me two days to build it and shoot it myself. So my plan for the spring is to do a simplified version of this black soldier fry larva composter. In fact, a lot of the ideas that I'm going to use to simplify it came from you in the comments. So thanks a lot for leaving those comments behind, giving me ideas, and helping me help you get started soldier fry larva composting. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green. And save a little green by doing it yourself. Thank you so much for watching and commenting. Please like and share and subscribe for a new DIY video almost every Friday. Ooh, smells already. Come on boys, let's get going.